Welcome to the Vitamin Professor Podcast, brought to you by VRM Media, publisher of Vitamin Retailer and Nutrition Industry Executive Magazines, in partnership with Neutraland USA. I'm your host, Gene Bruno, Professor Emeritus of Nutraceutical Science and Chief Scientific Officer of Neutraland USA. The purpose of this podcast is to help educate the dietary supplement industry about the science of nutraceuticals and other relevant topics. If you like what you hear and see, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest today, Alexis Collins of Stratum Nutrition, which is a premium supplier of novel evidence-based nutraceuticals. Alexis is a scientist and researcher with advanced degrees in both medical science and nutrition. She's been working in the dietary supplement industry for over 14 years, during which time She's gained a fairly extensive experience in product development, technical sales support, as well as new ingredient evaluation and launches. As Stratum's Director of Product and Brand Strategy, Alexis evaluates and oversees new ingredient launches and provides creative and technical support to marketing and sales. Today, Alexis and I are going to discuss SAGE. Welcome, Alexis. Hi, Gene. How are you doing? You know, I am doing really, really well. And uh, I'm, uh, you know, we, we saw each other at uh, Supply Side East and mm-hmm. had a nice discussion. I remember after talking to you thinking, oh, good. She's lively. <laughs> She's interesting. This should be a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. So I'm excited so, to, to be here talking with you today. So, you know, when people think about SAGE, unless they happen to have a fairly extensive background in nutraceuticals, um, a nutraceutical application isn't the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, you know, even when I think of sage, you know, I the first thing that might come to mind is what I use in my stuffing for my Thanksgiving turkey. Right. But, <laughs> but I'd like you to tell our listeners a little bit about the history of sage. Sure, sure. No, I completely agree. When my company first acquired this unique sage extract, I was the same. Sage was either something you were burning to get the evil karma out of the room, or it was something (laughs) that made the Thanksgiving stuffing extremely fragrant and delicious. So I was kind of surprised when I started doing my deep research dive into all things sage as we were preparing for this acquisition and evaluating the sage extract. And I found out that as far back as, you know, um, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, the use of sage has been promoted for brain health and cognitive health for hundreds of years. Um, I, I remember reading a, um, I remember reading a medieval script that said, he who grows sage in his garden will never die. That was very amusing. Wow. Yeah. I gotta, I, I gotta start growing some <laughs> I know, sage. Man. I know, no, I was, I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, I don't really have the climate for it, but maybe I can like get a pot going inside. Um, and then, you know, looking back into more documented, um, uh, text, the, there was a, the complete herbal published in 1652, that yep. stated, you know, verbatim, sage is great for brain, great sage is, you know, good for brain health and promoting memory. Sure. So I was kind of surprised. I was like, well, wait, you know, I've seen sage promoted for digestive health and for respiratory health, mostly in our supplement industry, but I haven't really seen it, you know, as promoted for cognitive health as it seems that it would be, you know, traditionally used for just based on this history that I found. So that was kind of the intriguing first you know, dive into the ingredient for me. You know, I I, I get that because, um, you know, I, I whereas where I have a, a master's degree in herbal medicine, mm-hmm. it was not really one of the herbs that we studied uh, at, at the time. This was a number of years mm-hmm. back. Yeah. And I remember, I, I want to say somewhere around 2013, somewhere in, in that, that time frame, mm-hmm. is when I first became aware that Sage had these, uh, cognitive health applications. And I remember reading some of the early research and thinking, right. oh, this is pretty cool. Right. Which, which kind of leads me into my next question. Sure. Which sure. is uh, with, uh, you know, this this traditional use of sage for cognitive health, mm-hmm. as well as some, uh, some of the research that, that I had seen uh, not that long ago, relatively speaking, about a decade or so. Mm-hmm. Why haven't we seen this herb take off like other popular nootropic herbs? What do you think? 
Right, right. So I, I, I have my own sort of hypothesis on this. Um, one, there's two reasons. One is that sage is, at, I mean, it might not be as different as I think from other traditional herbs that are being used in supplements, but the dive that I had to do on this ingredient into agricultural research journals ended up showing me that you can grow sage in the same exact geolocation and just changing tiny variables and how it's grown, the time that it's harvested produced up to an eightfold difference in levels of bioactives in the oh. sage extract. So one customer might purchase a bottle of 30 doses and have a really good experience with enhanced focus and cognitive health. But then when they run out and they go purchase another bottle, that bottle might have been harvested at a different time. And they might not get the same experience because the levels of bioactives, such as uh, rosmarinic acid, could be very different in that second bottle if it's so, not a dependable standardized product. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And of course, I would say that in general, that um, can be a problem in the um, herbal supplement industry is you always have to be so very careful about the herbs that you source how right. they're standardized, what they're done, because right. you might just get something that, that, that all herbs are not created equal, even if they have the same name. <laughs> right. So yeah, that makes right. a lot of sense, Alexis. And, uh, yes. and you know, this doesn't have to do specifically with what we're talking about, but something just mm -hmm. hit me, yeah. you know, as we were talking, which mm -hmm. is kind of relevant. Um, <laughs> so the very term sage, people often use that to right. refer to a, a wise or intelligent person, a sage individual. Exactly. Uh, and I wonder if that actual expression came because sage was associated with cognitive ability. I have thought you, the same thing. I wanted to bring it up. We were talking about the history of it. I'm like, it's kind of ironic that the one herb called sage has not been promoted I know, so right? widely <laughs> for cognitive health at this point, but I'll hold back my comments on that. So yeah, no, it is a very funny point. And the, the root name salvia of sage actually means uh, all over health, like an all over cure all of all yeah. health. So it's, uh, yeah, I was like, where has this herb been? So to that point, Indeed. yes, the experience could be different if it is a more picky, fickle plant as far as what it's going to produce based on growth and harvest and uh, region. And then, yeah. yes, did you? Yeah. So, well, uh, which, which makes yeah. me think. Yes, yes. I, I would venture to say then mm -hmm. that the, uh, the sage extract, the stratum cells, um must have some differentiating fe features that yes. make it a little bit uh more appealing if yes. you plan on formulating a product with sage you want to sort of address that and that's why i, I mean i think you've kind of addressed why any it's sage kind of won't gotten. do the job but yeah. tell us about stratum sage what is about sure 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 so like we were talking about you definitely want to have a sage that is going to give your end consumer a dependable experience so that when they go back for that second bottle, they're going to get the same ingredient with the same bioactives and the same experience. So this unique sage extract that we've acquired, it's 100% traceable. It's non-GMO. It's grown on the oh. same specific farm that has put in a lot of work on how to grow sage from seed to soil to harvest. And we keep that information a bit proprietary, obviously, because that's an important part of um, making this ingredient. Um, but because of all of the work that's gone into um, the farming of this specific sage, salvia officinalis is the species that we're extracting. Um, because of all of the work that's gone into it, we have a dependable standardized product that's standardized to 2.5% rosmarinic acid. And rosmarinic acid is a very strong antioxidant that's associated a lot with a lot of the cognitive health benefits oh, that yeah. come with sage. Um, so in addition to that, um, this specific sage extract has its own clinical research published in a healthy older population. And I can definitely get into that study. Um, but the, yeah, yeah. Well, I, in fact, I am going to ask yeah. you about that, but <laughs> sure. I, I also wanted to comment. Traceability is huge. You mentioned you have traceability on this. Yes. And, you know, when you buy, uh, I formula for the 45 years I've been in this industry, for about 30 something years, I've been formulating products and you can get just a ton of different suppliers coming out and selling a given herb. Right. And, you know, 
the uh, what they can't always tell you is where does it come from or or that there's traceability because they may get a material from one batch from one country and then get another batch from another material from another country or yes. even if it's the same country may be a completely different region it may be handled completely different and even if you have a single compound in there that that you said okay it's the same amount of this that doesn't mean that the totality of all of the compounds that may contribute exactly. towards the efficacy of it are exactly. going to be consistent and yes. so that when, when i hear traceability i thought oh that's yeah. an excellent thing that means you do get that consistency yes yeah. 100 percent on the same page i know i'm focusing on rosmarinic acid because that's one well, it's you know, a bioactive compound. that we can yeah. that we can you know standardize to but looking at salvia officinalis overall, like there are so many active compounds within this that have different effects in the body and in the brain. So yes, yeah. you know, getting sage from this country to this country. I mean, we've seen evidence that, you know, even sage grown in the same exact, you know, region can have completely different effects on a C. elegans lifespan model. Right, you know, right. and, and so it's like you wonder if it's across the globe, like you just the experience it's, it's, that the end consumer will have. And, and and if you think about it, that's not that um, uh, much of a mental disconnect, really, because think about you go to the supermarket, you buy a tomato uh, and okay. and you go to another supermarket, you buy a tomato, you go somewhere else, you buy it. They don't all taste the same. Some okay. have different tastes. Some have different uh, aromas. Some mm -hmm. have different textures. And right. even if they're the same species, the same variety of tomato, right. um, there's there's differences. So that's not at all unusual. So yeah, that so 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 you were starting <laughs> to talk about uh, the study in an older population, but I noted because yes. I I actually reviewed uh, the two clinical studies uh, mm -hmm. that that were done on the two di different distinct age groups, mm -hmm. which I think is really important. So mm. what I want to know is what did the uh, the Scully study mm -hmm. that that clinical trial that was mm -hmm. in a healthy elderly population mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what did it demonstrate and mm -hmm. what did the Edwards study in adolescents and young adults demonstrate because I think it's so cool that you got those different those different population groups covered so in any order you wish Sure, sure. So I'll go into the Scully study, which was done on a healthy older population, just because that's what we substantiate most of our claims on this ingredient based mm -hmm. upon this study. Um, so this was a small uh, uh, clinical trial, but it was randomized, placebo controlled, um, and 20 volunteers were in it. And this was just a single dose of our sage extract. So this wasn't, you know, this was our specific ingredient, our specific extract that was researched in various doses. And then what they found from this study, just to, to some, well, actually, let me tell you. So the way that they tested the cognitive assessment that was used in the study was the same cognitive assessment that's used to test anti-dementia drugs. So I'm going to totally flub the name of it. It's the cognitive assessment, computerized battery. I know I'm missing a word. That, in there. that, that one. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but basically this computerized test that had all of these different tasks. And so the volunteers took this, um, this, this test at various time points after taking our sage extract. And what this assessment, what these tasks were put into were different sort of factors. So there was speed of attention, but then there was accuracy of attention. There was speed of memory, but then there was accuracy of memory. And where we saw our sage extract shine wasn't in speed. It's not speeding up your brain, but it was really honing in on accuracy of attention and accuracy of secondary memory. And secondary memory, you know, compared to working memory, secondary memory, it working memory is like, okay, I'm gonna transfer this phone number over to this piece of paper. And you know, you're writing something down and it's very quick. Secondary memory is I go upstairs, I get distracted by something, and then I go to the room that I was originally going to go to and I don't remember what I'm there for. So that's my example of secondary memory, which I very think good. a lot of people can relate to. Oh yeah. Sure yeah. <laughs> so this study um, ended up showing us that there are two statistically significant doses of our sage extract um, compared to placebo. So for secondary memory, we ended up seeing a statistically significant boost in secondary memory um, in subjects taking our sage extract as quickly as two and a half hours after the first dose. And that effect was prolonged okay. through four hours, but then small study, we ended up losing significance at the six hour mark. Yeah. Now, if we double, oh, sorry, go ahead. Did you have some? I, I, I was just going to say that. <laughs> so, so one of the things that you know, as a, as a formulator, 
uh, over the years that I love to be able to do when I'm formulating a product for somebody, especially if they're, you know, uh, they're marketing and salespeople and they want to get quantified claims. They want to get something they can sort of hang their hat on a little bit. Uh, it, it, to be able to say that there's research where you get more of an immediate effect, an effect within a couple hours of taking it, that's pretty big because if you think about it, a lot of ingredients, some ingredients with really good studies like ginkgo, for example, you know, you, you've taken it for, for a number of weeks or months before you're right. realizing it's it. A couple months. <laughs> and to be able to say, oh, two hours, you know, or thereabouts, right. and, and you're, you're, you're noticing something. Right. And so that's, that's pretty cool. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. We completely agree. It was definitely one of the, the big points, you know, that uh, really led us to acquiring this material was the quick experience that we had with it. Just honestly, in our own internal group, but in the study. So we talked about the 167 milligram dose. If you ended up doubling that dose, then memory and attention were significantly boosted compared to placebo in as quickly as one hour after the single dose of the sage extract. That's amazing. And that effect was sustained through the six hours of the study. So yeah. significantly compared to placebo. That's pretty cool. And, and the doses aren't unreasonable. I mean, no. uh, a, a lot of times you have I mean, it just depends. I mean, you could look at something like acetyl L-carnitine. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. All you got to have is a couple, you know, a gram or two, and <laughs> right. you know, that's that's a whole lot more. It's hard. And, yeah. And so it's this hard. is this is a pretty reasonable dose. Yeah. Yes, to get the max benefit, you know, from our the clinical research that we have on this ingredient, three hundred thirty-three milligrams really isn't a lot to ask, you know, for for formulating. It does leave room to have some other ingredients formulated in with it as well. Um, so, and there was a, and then just to speak to the mechanism of action of SAGE and general salvia officinalis, um, in this clinical study, there was also a secondary arm that did an in vitro analysis just yeah. to show that this SAGE extract had the mechanism of action that we anticipated it having, which is it's an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Nice. So, yeah. So they just basically against an ethanol control confirmed that our specific extract also had this mechanism of action of you know, basically boosting acetylcholine, um, which is the neurotransmitter you want for that honing in and focusing yeah, type of effect. for that kind of, kind of memory function. You want to have that. And mm -hmm. if you are, uh, and, if, and if something is uh, breaking that down, such as acetylcholine esterase, the enzyme that breaks it down, yep. and if you the could scissors. inhibit that and maintain <laughs> the higher level, uh, mm -hmm. I could you could see where that's going to be of, of great benefit. And I, I and and one of the things that I know is when people age, you know, there's a lot of different things that don't work quite the same as they used to, and there's declines in different levels. And so I, I have seen in reading a number of studies out there that it seems like as people age, they have a little bit more acetylcholine esterase and a little less acetylcholine. So yes, it's very uh, unfair. More scissors unfair. and less. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Scissors to cut up the few acetylcholines that we have. Yeah. So yes. I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool to have something that can actually help address that in a meaningful way. Right. No, we really do see this extract poised um, to cover a demographic, I think, that needs this sort of ingredient. So, you know, I, I refer to them as elder millennials, and I totally stole that from a comedian who I love on Netflix, Eliza Scherzlinger, <laughs> I think is her last name. So I'll totally give her credit, but I'm in the elder millennial group. So I, I bond with her. Um, so we're having this demographic of people who, you know, they're knowledge workers, they, they're, they need to focus in, but their attention is constantly being taken, right? So Teams chat pops up, the cell phone gives you a notification and you're trying to focus in, right? And then in addition to that, you know, we're heading into the early forties where the CDC is reporting one in 10 adults are reporting worsening memory loss, you know, once they hit huh? 45. So you have this like horrible battle for your attention and you're trying to focus. And then you're also experiencing acetylcholine decline, worsening memory loss, right? So there's this group of people, I think that they're going to really want an ingredient that's not going to help contribute to any sort of extra stress, anxiety, or sleep problems, which are certainly side effects of caffeine. And then, you know, as, and so I think, you know, there's, 
been this real swing towards like energy. And it's like, we want energy, but I really think that the majority of people, if they're not looking at sports nutrition, really want that mental energy and that mental endurance and that mental stamina and ability to focus and get the work done. And this group is really coming in there where they might not want so much caffeine, but they still want to have that focus. You know what I'm talking about? I do. I do. Because that ca- caffeine support. is good at focus. And, but at the same time, if you have a sensitivity to it, Right. You know, it can have that jittery effect. That's like after a lunch. Yeah. There's no way I can have caffeine and be able to fall asleep. Well, it's just, I'm a slow metabolizer. It's just mm-hmm. not going to happen. And then, you know, the lovely added anxiety that comes, you know, as you get older, I guess, with more responsibilities, you know, it's just not, not as friendly to me as it was in my twenties per se. Right. So, well, then speaking of, of yeah, twenties, yes, let's take, oh, oh, let's, let's sorry, take I a totally moment. drifted. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, let's take a moment to um, to discuss, you know, the research uh, done by Edwards et al. Sure, on, sure. Uh, adolescents and young adults, because I think that's, <clears throat> I think it's so cool to have two different age groups. You don't always see that in, yeah. in um, nootropic type ingredients. Right, right. So this study by Edwards was done in young adults and adolescents. So we're looking at a range of, I believe it was 14 to 18, might have been a little bit younger. I can't recall off the top of my head. But this study, I I will say, you know, in the end, there were not highly significant results that came from the study assessment um, in young adults and adolescents. They did get significance, I think, hit for immediate word recall. And that was about it. And what the researchers, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just looking at this. I'm cheating. I'm looking at the study as we're oh, talking. No, go ahead. I'm and they're talking, you know, a significant, <laughs> a, a significant improvement due to the sage yeah. extract was shown for task assessing short-term episodic memory or immediate mm-hmm. word recall, mm-hmm, supporting mm-hmm. the beneficial effects. Right. And one of the things I see there is that, again, what occurs to me is this age group. Uh, so you have adolescents, which were 12 to 14 years old, and they have the young adults, which are 18 to 25. Yeah. Um, anyone in that age group may have need for immediate word recall. These are primary school times. These are, you know, yeah. middle school, high school. These, these are college years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I think anybody could who who's in, in, uh, in academics can see the benefit of immediate word recall, something that can help True. them with that. So I'm just... Just thinking that that still has some some interesting um, right some interesting potential applications. It does, it does, and this is definitely an area I wouldn't say that we're not going to be pursuing more research in. Um, yeah. Just because I do think that there there are some mechanisms of sage that would play well um, with certain cognitive health benefits that would be needed by young adults and and mm-hmm. adolescents, but. In this study, you know, yes, so it did show that immediate word recall effect. Um, the most important point I think that it showed was the safety of taking our sage extract in young adults and adolescents. So it's very nice to have this study done showing s- safety across generations um, with our extract and the cognitive health boost that comes from it. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we were uh, just touching a little bit about mechanism of action. Mm-hmm. acetylcholine esterase inhibitor uh, effects. Mm-hmm. So I wondered if you would care to uh, just comment on how, as a mechanism of action, mm-hmm. that differs in SAGE than in some of the other you know, popular nootropics, if that's something that you are able to comment on. Sure, sure. I can, I can try. <laughs> I haven't done as deep of a dive on other nootropics as I've done on SAGE. But I have looked at how you might want to formulate with different nootropic ingredients in sage. And there are a lot of, you know, adaptogen ingredients that also work as nootropics. So the acetylcholine pathway is really the the main active pathway that sage works by. There's also an oxidative stress component to it. Sure. And yes, there are other nootropic ingredients that work along the same pathway as sage with acetylcholine. But if you're looking to make, you know, um, I mean, there are, so it's not necessarily original in the acetylcholine pathway. There are certainly other ingredients that work there. Um, but as far as, you know, formulating perhaps like sage is going to give you such a quick experience use, utilizing this pathway. You don't necessarily want to formulate with another nootropic that's going to work right along the same pathway. So you might want to look towards, you know, uh, Bacopa for dopamine or, right. you know, saffron for GABA. You can kind of get this calm 
focus, de-stress, working memory. I, I, you like, know? <laughs> I like that you suggested not going along the same pathway. One of the things mm -hmm. I see happens way too much out there in formulation is redundancy. Right. Using nutraceuticals, different nutraceuticals with the same mechanism of action right. over and over in a single product. Right. Like, Why would you do that? Exactly. Use different, <laughs> different mechanisms of action so you can attack the problem or the issue from different sides and get a greater overall effect. Exactly. So, and and exactly. I would even say that while there are, are nutraceuticals that you can certainly use to increase acetylcholine levels, if you mm -hmm. come to mind, mm -hmm. um, the, the difference here is that its mechanism is that it's helping, well, it seems one of a major reason it seems to be helping the increase is by reducing the the breakdown of that. Right. And, right. And, that's a, and that's a cool thing because even if you're saying, well, I'm going to take other stuff to help increase my acetylcholine. Okay. How's your acetylcholine esterase doing in your body? Very if that's good still point. at a high level, whatever you're taking, <laughs> it gets converted. That's still going to be broken down. If you can, yeah. I mean, it's all going to be broken down eventually, but if you oh, right, right. reduce the breakdown. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That exactly. makes a whole lot. And, and it's, it's a nice way to do it too, because it's just taking whatever your body's making anyway and helping to right. keep it there. Right. Exactly. I do. And I, you know, personally, like I do love that type of pathway where it's what you're naturally producing and we're just letting what you naturally produce flow a little bit longer. So yeah, that's right. I've yeah. seen, I've seen similar kinds of approaches in some products out there with uh, uh, testosterone boosters uh, where uh, combinations of herbs and other nutraceuticals are actually able to help decrease the, 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 um, the metabolization or the or the breakdown or the conversion of testosterone to mm -hmm. DHT or to estradiol. And by doing right. that, you maintain what you're the, producing. The, yeah, what you're producing as opposed to say, I'm making so much more, your levels right. are maintained at a higher level because you're not converting it to something else. Or right. in this case, breaking it down. So I think, yeah. I think it makes a great deal of sense. Yeah, great. I like that. So, um, you know, um, what are every... Every nutraceutical has categories that it might be good in. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, a general cognitive health category, even those could have subcategories and, and, uh, and all. Mm -hmm, Just from definitely. your understanding of SAGE, in particular, you know, Stratum's SAGE, what would you say are uh, some of the categories where it's going to fit best? Sure, sure. So we kind of, I kind of went, you know, <laughs> around and talked about one a little bit earlier, um, but definitely for that post lunch pick me up when you would normally have a cup of caffeine, even though you know that it's going to harm your sleep later in the evening. I think that sage is a great alternative um, cognitive booster to, you know, per se having a cup of coffee. So for people who are caffeine sensitive, looking to move away from caffeine, um, any sort of formulations that are trying to move away from caffeine. I've seen a lot of pre-workouts um, marketing themselves sure. as non-stim, but if you still want to have that quick effect that you would get with caffeine, I think that our sage extract is a great alternative because it's going to work quickly. The end user is going to experience it the same way that they would feel that enhancement with caffeine, but they're not going to get any of those you know, side effects of caffeine that they're looking to avoid by buying a non-stem product. That that's that makes sense. And, and when you mentioned the sports nutrition, it hit me immediately that, you know, focus in, in a lot of different right. sports is a big deal. Yes. And if <laughs> yep, you can yep. take something that, whereas you might not be trying to improve your memory per se, uh, mm -hmm. being able to do something to improve focus in those situations can be a, a right. big deal. So it kind of makes sense that you could put it in there and you don't have to do it at such high levels uh, that, that it would be sort of, uh, a prohibitive. So yeah, that's exactly, cool. exactly. And then another category that I'm actually really excited about is, um, helping out with a couple of, um, uh, perimenopausal symptoms. So we all know that there's this brain fog that is associated with perimenopause sage providing its cognitive boost and healthy older population. I think it works really well with that, but now I'm diving into a lot of generic salvia fish analysis research that's showing, I mean, there was a meta-analysis published last year showing that salvia fish analysis specifically, our sage species, helps reduce the frequency of hot flashes. So you get this duo effect from this ingredient of boosting cognitive health and focus, which I think we all want no matter what stage of life we're in, 
And then also helping reduce with frequency of hot flashes is definitely a bonus. So I'm doing this meta, you know, like research analysis right now. You caught me like right in the middle of it, but that's what I'm excited about right now for it. So I have to tell you, it's something that um, I've formulated a number of products in uh, uh, over the years for menopause. And I've actually used sage in some of it because part of its traditional use has to do with it's reducing reducing night night sweats. The sweating, yeah, hyperhidrosis, yeah. yes, yes. And so that is kind of cool because yeah. listen, it's cool to say, hey, this is reducing your um, uh, hot flashes, which is uh, which is great and the most mm -hmm. common symptom. But the truth is, there's a lot of ingredients that do that. There's mm -hmm. not sure. a lot. There's not that a reduce lot the that reduce the night sweating. Yeah. So, it, so if you're do if you've got a formula there or you want to create one, or you have one already where you say, yeah, this is going to help with uh, uh, hot flashes, but you don't have anything there to address night sweats, you, you should consider sage. Exactly. That helps it. And like I said, I've used that in your Exactly. Stuff, so, yeah, and, and yeah. Good I, I, so really again, works. you know, I started in this whole like cognitive realm with this ingredient, and now I'm going and I'm exploring all of the other benefits of salvia fish analysis specifically. It's, I know. It's so the it's, beauty it's of nice. herbal medicine. It is no the beauty of herbal medicine. No one thing does, not, it there's not just a one exactly. narrow focus. It can do many, many herbs can right. do many things. Right, Sage right. certainly fits that description. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and then I would just say, you know, speaking to like the caffeine point, um, obviously, I think for, you know, any sort of all nighter, or if you need to bang out a paper, you know, an article, and it's a certainly past time to have caffeine, then I think that this is a fantastic ingredient for it. And since our research is done on a single dose, you know, effective within the first hour, I think that, you know, it's fantastic just for these, mo it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, it can certainly be this daily dose that you want to take just for optimization, but it's also great to have an experiential ingredient kind of the way you would use caffeine, um, that will give you a benefit as you need it on the go, or, you know, you don't necessarily have to take it every day. So here's something I'm wondering about now. Yeah. We've talked about like, you could take it then and you could take it at certain times you're needing it. And be, I have formulated a lot of different um, dosage delivery forms over the mm -hmm. years. Um, I remember when, uh, when gummies came out, I, 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 I inaccurately predicted, oh, this will never go anywhere. <laughs> I think you and me both and a lot of other people were like, okay. And they're like, oh, well, it's good for kids. And then yeah, adults, exactly, what? sure. what's happening here? <laughs> so, but, you know, capsules, tablets, that's, that's sort of a standard and it can, you know, not even really worth having a discussion about that because obviously it can work in those. It's a powder. It's great. Yep, yep. I start thinking about things like, okay, what if somebody's doing a powder or a stick pack or, or gummies? Is it suitable for there? Because listen, sage has a wonderful flavor, but it's <laughs> the kind of flavor you use with your stuffing or poultry. Yes, or we other have things. made Thanksgiving gummies and they will be available in November now. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, I'm just wondering, <sighs> is this something that A, could be used in a dosage delivery form? like a gummy or a powder? And if so, do you need some um, flavor masking agents to help neutralize some of that? I know a lot of times you can mix something, you can make a real strong taste, like a, a like a grape berry kind of combo that's got mm -hmm. a heavy taste to it mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. can cover up some stuff. And this isn't like a bit of <laughs> nasty taste. It's just a-, a Right, right. Exa taste. Exactly. So, uh, you know, remove, I guess, what you think of sage tasting, like when you're cooking it with, you know, your Thanksgiving stuffing or your chicken uh, dressing. And so this does definitely have an herbal flavor to it, but it's not going to be that overwhelming sage oh, okay. that we think of, right. um, just the, the ethanolic extraction of it makes it a lot easier um to to formulate with so we oh, nice. were yeah so we have some really nice um lime mojito flavored gummies that work really well we did the mojito it's like they're lime but they've got this little herbal finish so it's not a bad herbal finish it's just an adult flavor so we well, really love that so it works really well yeah. that. and the dose is low so again another benefit for formulating into gummies so you don't have to have like six gummies all at once to get your you know brain boost going um, it dissolves really well. Um, and we've have the micronized version in a stick pack. So it can oh, go you have a micronized water. version. We oh, do, okay. we do. So it can go straight into water, um, dissolves easily, mixes up easily and has, I liken it most to, uh, an ice green tea. So very nice, nice flavor. Yeah. So, and then we all, you know, obviously like it works well with other flavors too. You just kind of have to find the right ones, but 
we haven't run into any we haven't run into any um roadblocks with it as far as formulating um it's That's really flexible. pretty cool and, and and i should probably take this offline but uh, i want to get a sample of the mic <laughs> i know and i'm working on a product that that might work really well in so sure I'll sure talk about that no, later. we'll do that yeah yeah no that sounds great <laughs> so, okay cool cool thank awesome. you for that now yeah um so based on the research mm -hmm. um what doses would you recommend be used in a supplement and, and mm -hmm. um, how often should it be taken? Is it a once a day thing? Is it a twice a day thing? What can you address that? Sure, sure. So we generally recommend this as a daily dose. Um, if you're looking for just sustained cognitive health, then I don't see any problem with taking the 167 milligrams. That's the dose that had the first significant um, uh, cognitive boost compared to placebo at two and a half hours. So that's a really good maintenance dose. If you're looking for, you know, or if you can wait, if you're okay with a little bit more of a latent, you know, mental boost, then by all means, the 167 is scientifically proven. Um, the 333 milligram dose, I need my brain boost. I want it now let's go. You know, that's, that's the dose I'd recommend for that. Um, and I, all you're going to need is once daily because our research showed that that effect is sustained through the six hours of the study. Oh, so that's beautiful. You know, yeah. So that's you don't really need to need a dose more than that. Um, and then, yeah, as far as, um, how people want to take it, it certainly works on the go as you want it. Um, and it could certainly help with cognitive health based on all of our medieval traditional literature and, and traditional use of sage that we were talking about earlier, it's absolutely fine to take it daily. It's probably, you know, great. But our our research right now is focused on the immediate cognitive benefits of it. Okay, very yeah. good. Well, that's excellent. I, I think you have answered all of my questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to add or do you feel like you kind of covered it uh, for the most part here? I think we've covered it. This has been a great conversation, Gene. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. So, yeah. you know, thank you to Alexis for, for joining us today. And just want to remind everybody that if you liked what you heard and saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.